a great question. I think the biggest thing about them that's been really consistent is just uh, their level of physicality. Um, so this is my third game actually playing. Uh, the, my freshman year, we went there. And uh, I went on a trip, but uh, Trey Hill was here, so he played that game. Um, and I just remember seeing how physical it was. And uh, that, that's definitely something that sticks with you throughout the years. And you kind of realize as you start to prepare and when you start to play for yourself, um, understanding the level of physicality that comes with this game and understanding that this isn't a game that you can take lightly and you must be on your P's and Q's. So I think they've done a tremendous job of staying consistent as, uh, as far as that level of physicality. Of course, there are different things that may change throughout the years depending on their personnel, whether it be the amount of times they want to blitz or different things they want to do on first, second, third down, whatever it may be, um, just depending on personnel. But, but the main thing is that they're very consistent with their physicality. Yeah, just wondering about you guys. Normally, this game is is physical versus physical, uh, run versus run, stop the run, all that kind of stuff. You guys have been kind of uh, wired a little bit different on offense this year. Uh, it, I mean, is it uh, do you have to be careful about getting drawn into a game like that? Are you doing them a service by trying to play that game, or uh, or, or uh, do you do what you've been doing these last few games, which is throw the ball a lot? So I think at the end of the day, our job is to try to win. Uh, that, that's that's really all you can do. However that is, however you have to get it done is what you do. Um, I think they're a great team, and they're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to run the ball. They're going to do play action, whatever it may be that works for them. Um, and vice versa, we have to do what works for us. So whether it be a game that you have to win throwing the ball 50 times or it's a game you have to run the ball 50 times, at the end of the day, the goal is to try and win. So whatever that is, you adjust on the fly, and you try to get it done. Cedric, when we talked to Tate on Monday, he was frustrated with the run block and himself, also the entire offensive line. Where do you feel like you guys are as an offensive line when it comes to run blocking, and in what ways can you guys improve going forward? I think we're one block away from, from having some, some big ones. I think uh, we've all taken turns, you know, messing things up. I think we've had a numerous amount of plays where it's four out of the five guys doing a job perfect. And one guy may, may mess something up. And that's that's kind of the beauty of the position that we play. You need all five guys working in unison at all times, you know, for things to look pretty. So um, I think that's kind of what we are, is just really understanding that uh, at the end of the day, no matter how big or how small your your block may be for the development of the play, it's still very important that you can't take that lightly. Yeah, a couple of different guys have acknowledged that maybe they haven't been playing up to the, the standard that has been set here. And given that this is Kentucky a game that has repeatedly been set as one of, if not the most physical on the schedule, is the fact that it is such a physical game and knowing that, you know, style points aren't going to matter, who throws the ball the best isn't going to matter. It's, you know, just whoever is the most physical. Can that be something that this team really sort of needs and leans into this weekend? So if I'm understanding your question properly, um, you're basically asking, is being physical something that we want to lean into and kind of just make that our identity? Yeah, especially with the way the team has sort of been struggling. So um, I think that's something that we try to hang our head on every year. If I'm, if I'm just saying what you know, Coach Smart preaches, I think the biggest thing is that we try our hardest um, to be a physical team, to go out there and depend on the run, stopping the, stop the run as well. Um, and that's just kind of what we, what we want to be able to do. And of course, this will be a physical game. Their goal as well is to run the ball and stop the run. So at the end of the day, it'll just be about who can execute the best, and you kind of got to go from there. Cedric, what uh, stands out to you about Deion Walker, that number zero for Kentucky, and what challenge does he present going up against a guy like that? Uh, really twitchy. That's the first thing that stands out to me. Um, it's his ability to kind of imp improvise on the run and kind of just figure things out. Uh, there, there are some times that he may – um, I, well, I've seen on film where he may have been in a bad position as far as um, the, the O-lineman may have been under him and he's improvised by shedding a block or spinning out of a block, whatever it may have been. Um, I think he does a tremendous job of kind of just really understanding what, what's going on. He's not a guy that just kind of goes to a gap and stops. He's a guy that is always looking to get to the ball. So I think he does a tremendous job of being twitchy and improvising on the run um, based upon what the offensive line is showing him. Said, I feel like the true zero has more teams play it. You see it a lot more often. But Kentucky's a football team that really features a true nose tackle. Talk to me the the week of preparation when you know you're going into a game where you might be uncovered versus a game where you know you're going to be covered a lot of the snaps. Well, I think for well, I'll speak for me specifically. I think you kind of prefer you know to be covered up just for the simple fact of. It's usually immediate, you know, you don't have to read as much. 
You don't have to um, process what, what your guard's doing, what that G or that three tech's doing. You don't have to also process what the linebacker's doing. It's usually kind of very simple um, in what you're doing for that assignment usually. Um, typically, it's either one or two things. Either that guy's going to rock or he's going to play into you. Somebody's going to fill that A gap. And at the end of the day, it's just going to be a matter of who can kind of do their job the best. So um, I think, speaking for me as a center, I kind of prefer um, to go to do that, uh, especially um, with a great guy like they have. Number nine is really, really good, really strong, really stout guy. Um, I think he presents a, a great challenge for myself this week. Um, and you kind of just look forward to things like that as a competitor. So just want to go out there and compete to the highest level, and hopefully I can shine some glory on God. Yeah, we're at the halfway point of the season. This is a top 20 ranked undefeated team coming in. You guys are undefeated, ranked number one. You're heading into a month. There's going to be a few of these in a row. Uh, you guys jacked. I mean, what's the feeling going into Saturday night's game, uh, you know, ESPN, night game, the the vibe that you're getting on campus and heading into Saturday? Well, as far as the vibe on campus, I don't think I'm the right guy to ask just because I don't really have class on campus too much anymore. Um, so I'm kind of just home in the facility throughout the day. So, um, Okay, okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think definitely the guys are excited for sure. I think that the guys are really looking forward to the opportunity. But I think the biggest thing is um, not becoming too excited or becoming too uh, overstimulated. I think it's understanding that the game has to be played day in and day out. You can't play um, the game on Monday, Tuesday and be burnt out by Friday. You kind of have to take it in stride. You have to prepare the right way. You have to give yourself a break in between that and then get back to work. So I think that's the biggest thing is being able to handle those emotions and understanding that uh, there is a level of excitement, but also there's a level of, um, I guess, relaxation that kind of comes with it in between that kind of builds up throughout the week that goes on until you finally get to that, um, I guess, climax of preparation. Gotten to see a little bit more of Michael Morris. Where do you feel like he's improved the most over the course of the season? So I think Mike is really physical. Uh, <laughs> if I had the the skills that Mike had, gosh, I, I could only tell you. But um, I think he's a tremendous player. I think the biggest thing that he's done to me is really trying to understand what the coaches are asking of him. I think that's the biggest thing. I think when you're kind of just starting to play, I think there's a a very interesting line between playing football and also trying to do exactly what the coaches are asking you to do. And sometimes it becomes blurry and you kind of see that um, with the way that guys around the country play sometimes just because there's usually, a, I guess, a blurred line with just going out there and having fun and playing ball, but also trying to be perfect and do exactly what your coach ac asks you to do. So I think that Mike has done a tremendous job of trying to do what Coach Charles is asking him to do, but also doing it within the scheme of what he knows how to do. So I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, with, with the clock changes, it seems like the first quarter in particular is, is a shorter in terms of possessions and, and plays out there. And as an offensive guy, do you have a preference, whether it be to get the ball first or do you just not care? As that's hard to say. Uh, and the reason why it's hard to say, because it kind of depends on what we don't, what we are planning on doing that week. I think it depends on what Coach Smart, his aim is. Um, whether or not he wants us to set the tone or whether or not he wants the defense to set the tone. I think that kind of goes back to Coach Smart and um, you kind of just got to buy into the game plan. So I think preferably um, you kind of just want to be in a position to where you're ready to capitalize if, you're, if your number's called first. But ultimately, you have to trust Coach Smart and understand that he has a game plan.